The following program contains themes and images that may not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Panda Pig Inc. Rate, review, and subscribe. Hello again. Welcome back. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Oh my god, go away. <laughs> Don't hate me. You know you like it. I know I like you. <laughs> Francisco. 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 <laughs> I need to watch the elf again. What, what did you say? I said I need to watch elf again. It did not sound like you said elf. What did it sound like I said? Something you shouldn't have said. Ooh, Ooh, naughty, naughty. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's Pig. And it's Panda. Welcome and back, guys. Welcome back to the Heart and the Bones, episode six. six. We've wow. made it this far. Congratulations. I'm so proud. Round of applause. Round of Clap applause. Clap and a half. Clap and a half. Clap All and right. a half. But let's get those words going. I you, can talk, I swear. You okay? You, I'm the worst defender. <laughs> <laughs> can you, you got words? You okay? I'm you okay. Good? I can handle this. Okay. You All good? Right. Okay. Okay. You want to start us off? Yes. So All this right. episode is called The Man in the Wall. Okay. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and it was directed by Tanya McKiernan and written by Elizabeth Benjamin. Um, have we heard these names before? I don't think we have. Not in the last five episodes. Fresh Lit. names. All right. But I am, I, I like what they did here. I did too. It was very fun. Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot. They were, they were amazing. <laughs> so basically this episode is about a man in a wall. Literally. Uh, Bones and Angela go to a club mm -hmm. and... In the, in the in the happening of events, they find human remains trapped behind a wall. Mm -hmm. Turns out to be um, a young man who is a up-and-coming artist in the area. And they try to figure out who killed him. Turns out it was his record label head guy. I think it's like a producer, I guess. Producer. Is what they call record label record label producers. Mm -hmm. Murdered him and his girlfriend. Dun dun dun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's music, there's drugs, there's violence, there's sexual tension. But wait, there's, there's drama. more. <laughs> this episode's got it all. Yes. Are you ready for it? Are you ready? <clears throat> I'm never ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, so we start um, off. They're at the lab. They're in Bones' office, actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Angela's trying to get Bones to to go to the club with her, and mm -hmm. Bones is working on some research. And you notice how Bones says she's doing research for a show. Well, she doesn't even just say that. She says all these things, like so many different excuses as to why she can't come out. And I'm like, that sounds like every introvert ever. Like, hey, let's go out. But I got stuff to do. <laughs> what I took away was she said she's writing for the show, not that they ever listen. I felt like that was a nod to the fact that, like, Kathy Reichs um, does research, did research for the show. And they didn't listen. <laughs> well, I think it was kind of a joke, but I know that she consulted a lot on their different yeah. episodes, so I just thought that was funny, <laughs> but you're if right. that's true, that's actually really funny. I was just focusing more on the aspect, like, her excuses, They she had, like, three different excuses, and I was like, every introvert ever. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> oh, God. So then they finally get to the club, and you notice Run It by Chris Brown is playing. I was like, Chris Brown, hey! Oh my god. Throw gosh. back. Let's get it. I know. I have such conflicted feelings, but man, it was a good song. <laughs> it, it was. It was it's a good so time. Good. He has it a brought good back voice. memories. <laughs> yes. Good voice, great dancer, crazy past. But mm -hmm. I mean, I can appreciate his art. Yes. For what it is. Absolutely. I'm not going to lie. I was obsessed with Chris Brown. 
I really was. I mean, I don't blame you. He was very popular. Mm -hmm. Very popular. He still does have some bangers, but during the time, shoo, he was he was. Off a, the I was obsessed. I was obsessed. His voice was very good. He had the charms. He had, he had the, the moves. Looks, the moves. He was good. Mm -hmm. He's just, you know, things happen. Stuff yeah. went down. It'd be like that. <laughs> So they're in the club, mm -hmm. and they're, um, they go to have a good time yeah and bones does her bones thing and she tries to analyze the situation no. talking about Before how that she goes is my costume all right yes yes <laughs> i'm like i i'm gonna say that now like whenever i need to do an outfit check so is my costume all right yes I love that part so much. <laughs> That's before she starts analyzing the dance floor yes. and music and That's, everything. Yep. And Angela's like, um, Bones was saying how the music, it's hip hop, so she's saying how it's so tribal. Mm -hmm. And Angela's like, yo, don't don't say tribal. Like, <laughs> don't like, do just, that. Just relax, honey. Don't, don't think too hard. And uh, uh, a bystander on the dance floor comes up to Bones and is like, are you saying we're tribal? And Bones is like, no. She says, uh, hip hop mirrors the direct visceral connection you see in tribal communication. And, and I'm yeah. like, what? I, and, yeah. she, and she's like, uh, she says, after the Cartesian split in the 17th century, we separated out the mind from our bodies, the numinous, the numinous to the, from the animalistic. <laughs> And they're like, you're calling me an animal? And the and the one lady comes up, and this is my favorite part. She goes, no fool. She's using Descartes' philosophy to say she's down with the music. Burn. So <laughs> I needed to know what all of that meant. Really? Because all I'm sitting here, I'm just like, all right. So um, mentioning any type of tribal is a trigger, apparently. Well, so. because, I mean contextually I mean, you can see why because a lot of the times i don't know whether you say black or african-american but it wasn't get, even just that it was like any type of tribe she mentioned she would everyone was getting triggered be, everywhere around her she was changing tribes as they were going because they weren't listening they heard yeah. the tribe part and they were they like they just got completely offended they were like this white lady comes in the <laughs> club and calls us a bunch of tribal people yeah. like it sounds offensive but they didn't see where she was coming from no. but what i love is the the one woman who like is into philosophy just shows up for bones <laughs> and i was like you know what intellectuals like to dance too okay they really do but you said you did research on what she said mm -hmm. so what did she say so the part one part that i was when she first says how hip-hop marrow mirrors the direct visceral connection mm -hmm. so visceral is like um like um, emotional not not brain like you know like your body okay so it's a connection um in tribal communication so i'm guessing what she's saying is like feeling connections emotional and thinking so you feel the music and you feel its message rather than dissecting it okay um, so and then <laughs> i'm assuming like the girl who went in like to interrupt i guess that was kind of the way of the show kind of explaining like this is what she meant y'all right well there's more to it so she says she's using Descartes' philosophy. Yes. So what Descartes' philosophy is, is it's a thesis called mind-body dualism. Okay. So it's basically that the nature of your mind is its own thing, and that it's completely different from your body. You know, like how sometimes people say, think with your heart instead yes. of with your head? Yes. It's kind of like that is how I'm interpreting it. So what they're saying is, is that hip hop, you feel it, you know, like yeah, yeah, rhythm, yeah. you know, when people talk about rhythm, they feel it, you feel it. They so feel what the she's, moves, mm -hmm. they feel the, the rhythm of it, the bass, mm -hmm. the beat. So what she's saying is that hip hop is a feeling music. You're using your emotional intelligence and your body to feel mm -hmm. it rather than, you know, Mozart where you're analyzing all of the different notes and and meanings of of the different parts of it if that makes sense uh, in a way yeah i would say Bach more oh you know what i i meant to just say 
a, a classical, like classical composer. So don't like take that. that. <laughs> I said Mozart specifically. I just pulled the name out of a hat. So if you want to say Bach, I was just I don't Bach. know when I think that I just think Bach. He has a certain way with right. When I think Bach, I think straight up metronome type mm-hmm. of thing. So let's say Bach then. <laughs> so hip hop, you're going to listen to it differently than mm-hmm. you would listen to Bach, which makes sense. It's just the way she was putting it. It was like. What are these words coming out of your mouth? All you're right. saying is tribal, and you're right. pissing us off, yo. So, but... <laughs> but, but they get like, triggered, okay. and then it's like... <laughs> what got me, though, is after the... Was it Descartes? What did she say? The Descartes? She's saying that Bones was using Descartes' philosophy. Yes. So after she talks to the girl, like, she intervenes. What got me is, like, you know, she gets punched in the face, and then... The girl was like, get out of my way. And Bones basically just puts her arm around her head and just shoves her. Yes. Like, a complete shove. Like, bye. But, like, it was so effortless. Yes. Like, she just basically, like, threw her away. Like, okay, you're over here now. To me, it was like, it was almost like a flick. Yeah. Like, she flicked her down. Like, girl, bye. She didn't even take a second look. She just kept going. She flicked as she walked away. Yes. (laughs) And then the fact that she had to go do, like, a straight up, was it, like, um... She did, like, a full-on, was it 360? Yeah. Kick? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I, roundhouse kick? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. She, she she chucked Norris to his ass mm-hmm. into the wall. Into this guy the wall. Into the wall. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. That poor guy. That poor guy. Especially because he got... So, after, like, you know, this confrontation happens, um, Bones kicks the guy into a wall, and a bunch of white powder just goes poof all over the dance floor. And... Angela actually tastes the powder, and I'm like, girl, <laughs> that would not have been my first thought. But basically, they found it was, it was like, It's because you don't do drugs. Yes. But apparently, um, it was drugs, and I'm just like, dang, that guy got the first hit. He went straight into that wall. You know what? And at least he didn't feel a thing, because now he's high. <laughs> These are facts. Everyone in that room got high I mean, kite. He may be a little traumatized for, you know, being face-to-face with a dead body. True. But at least he was high. He'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's good. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> so Angela and Bones being a high was, like, the best thing. <laughs> I'm going to say high Bones and Angela is my favorite duo, and I wish they made them high much more often yes. in the show. Like, you have Angela being more passive-aggressive, but Bones high? She is hyper. She's like, hysterical. Like, off the charts, hyper. Like, when she goes, get away from the remains! Like, like she's, like, <laughs> screaming at the guy. <laughs> that whole part was comedic genius. Or how she was repeating Booth with yes. everything he was saying, and she had added to, like, why'd you do that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why'd you do that? So and what where? was the reason for that? Where did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then when she's so excited, she's like, Zach, Zach, come Zach, here. Zach, look, look, do you see this? It's a modern mummy. Look at this. <laughs> and you have Angela looking at Tessa like, mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. You and exactly. Booth, you, you commitment issues much? Mm hmm. <laughs> There's just so much to unpack in this scene. And They're I feel fun. like I have a lot more statements than like real insight. I really do too. And, and, but like, that's literally me. That's yeah. all I do. Like I my statements. first, <laughs> my first thought is like, so why did Booth bring Tess to the crime scene in the first place? Yes, they were on a date, but it's not like the mummy was going to be more dead if he dropped <laughs> Tessa off at home. Yeah, they could have been closer. I mean, it's more of like she could have stayed in the car, to be honest. But it, uh, but I don't see that either, because he doesn't know how long he's going to be at a crime scene. So Some, why bring her in the first place? It depends. Like, maybe they needed him urgently. So maybe they were, like, right there, and they needed him as soon as possible, because literally Bones is out of her mind. So then my argument to that would be, he should have gotten Tessa a cab in the first place. You, what do you think about maybe Tessa was curious? Maybe she wanted to see it. She didn't look curious. She, she didn't want to be there, but at the same time, you could tell she kind of wanted to be there just because to see what Booth is up to. But then when she actually saw the remains, she's like, all right, I don't want to be here anymore. Maybe you'd have to watch it again because I didn't see that part. Me, it was more like, I just feel like, you know, curiosity. Like, oh, what's going on now? Because it's mm-hmm. at a club. Mm-hmm. You're like, what? Maybe she goes to that club. Maybe she's like, oh, hey, I go to this club. What's going on here? You know? So Mm -hmm. who knows? But 
again, I was more, once I saw Morris Chestnut, I was like, mm-hmm. hold up. Mm-hmm. He's here. He's everywhere. <sighs> the man is everywhere, dude. I'm not mad at I'm it. I'm not either. I was like, oh, hello. If he could be more places than everywhere, I would be happy. Stop yourself. Hold on. Wait. I will not. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to him later. We'll, I will we'll not. We'll come back to him. And you will all hear us swooning and simping over this beautiful I will beautiful die man. on this hill. <laughs> I don't believe you. He's so good. <laughs> but, um, so, the bit, um, there's this B-plot going on between Booth and, um, Tessa mm-hmm. about their relationship in this episode. Yeah. So, Angela while she's high, comments on it, and she's like, hmm, I wouldn't see you guys as a couple. You know, the cop and the lawyer. It's very touching. Yes. You know? And, um... She keeps, like, questioning their commitment, basically, throughout the whole episode. Just keeps going at it. Mm -hmm. Like, picking at them. Like, hmm, commitment punch? Yes. We'll talk about it more later, but she definitely brought it in on that one. Something else that I thought was, like, I don't know. I didn't do research. I'm not familiar with the crime scene portion of investigations. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if she'd be allowed to work on the body while she's high. I don't think so either, to be honest. (laughs) I feel like it was movie purposes. Like, oh, it was fun. Entertaining. But then, you know, they also have, like, the FBI's forensic team there. So technically, they didn't even have to be there in the first place. Well, when it comes to Bones, they always want her to be there first. Yeah, but it was for more, like, consulting. True. In the beginning, it was consulting. Now it's like they just always want her there. But usually, Booth is supposed to be there with her. Well, it's not that, um that she's always there it's that we're only seeing the cases that yeah, she's yeah. there for yeah majority of them that they consider like oh you need to be here only you can solve this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah but that scene dude i was dying i kept re-watching it over and I over could, again it was so I could funny not stop especially the whole zach 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 look at this zach i need the clip of <laughs> I need to create an audio file for myself of Bone saying, stay away from the remains. Yes, I need that too. I need that. I need that. It's so entertaining. Or maybe just a clip of just Morris Chestnut just existing. Mm. Yes. (laughs) We could go on with that. You can't see me, but I'm staring off into the distance, blushing. Stop yourself. Stop yourself. It's okay. I cannot. It's okay. I cannot. (laughs) But so anyways, we move on to the last. So and Bones and Angela like hung over and even more. Well, Angela's more pissy, and now Bones is pissy. Mm-hmm. For sure. God, that has me dying. Yeah, they basically they're trying to figure out maybe what happened, mm-hmm. and they bring up the idea that maybe he, the victim, was stuck behind the wall, and that the bag of meth pop that he was holding popped. And then he inhaled it too much, like it popped and he inhaled, inhaled all of it mm-hmm. and asphyxiated. Yeah. And they um, they figure that he was dead for about six weeks. Mm, something like that. I believe it was. I didn't catch that part. I yeah. just know Angela's like, why am I here? Mm-hmm. And Bones is like, you wanted me to have a good time, so you get to suffer with me. True. Like this is, I, it was like payback is something along those lines. She was just like, this is payback for showing me a good time. And Hodgins is loving every minute of it. Oh, yeah. He totally is. <laughs> and then they um, look at his hand, at the the victim's hand, it, yeah. to ID him from the fingerprint. So Bones degloves the skin from the hand. Like the bones. Of the from hand. the bones. And they figure out that the victim is Roy Taylor, mm-hmm. otherwise known as DJ Mount, one of the best DJs in the D.C. area. Woot woot. Um... <laughs> And <laughs> but so okay so before we go from this i had i could not shake it where i'm just watching this over and over again and i'm like okay she has the hand mm-hmm. and i'm wondering do you really need to peel the skin off of Dude. the bone and put your hand in Dude. the skin as if it was a glove to get the fingerprint because you already rehydrated it dude and it's a fingerprint dude. so did you have to do all that i dude Seriously, like, I'm with you a thousand percent. I'm like, it's on the skin. You did not have to put your hand. I was like, all right, movie magic. Okay, and let's Click. say, like, 
For what purpose? To gross out Booth. That's the purpose. Because <laughs> I was like, dude, you do not need to do that. It was interesting seeing him uncomfortable like that, though. But it's funny because they do it again later. Yeah. But also... Maybe it's a common thing. Maybe the bones was too stiff. But still, I feel like they could have just broken the finger at that point. Right. And he already cut off the whole hand. <laughs> when they're having that conversation, he's trying to distract himself by talking to Bones about potential vacation spots. Yeah. And they're talking about Costa Rica. And Bones mentions how, you know, they've got parrots there. And Booth is like, he doesn't like parrots. He says that people should do all the talking. You actually paid attention to that part. All I looked at was the fingerprint scene. The glove. <laughs> I had no idea what were the words coming out of his so mouth. He was, I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> he was trying to distract himself. And he was yeah. saying different vacation spots. And Bones is like, he was asking her if she'd ever been to Costa Rica. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I've been to Costa Rica. They have great wildlife and parrots. And he's like, oh, no, I don't like parrots. I think I think people should do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that makes me sad, Booth. Why don't you like parrots? He's not a bird person, I guess. Mm. He's, just, he's a man, the man's. Does he maybe he thinks birds are too feminine? I don't know. Mm. That's a negative point for for Booth. Then, well, this is why we have Morris Chestnut in here. Yeah, he's gonna balance out this episode for me. <laughs> in fact, he might he might steal the show. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So then the next scene. <laughs> so we didn't really have much to comment on the next scene, but basically, um, Hall, Randall, Randall Hall, Hall the, producer, the producer, he comes to Booth's office and basically gives us the first potential sub- suspect, which is DJ Rules. Um, Saying that it was DJ Mount's number one enemy. Mm-hmm. And DJ Rules was actually performing at the club while Angela In the opening and scene. Bones, yeah, they were at. They were at the club in the beginning, so you hear, hey, give it up for DJ Rules, blah, blah, yes. blah. So, he was there. So, they're like, oh, okay, we know him. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have much to say during that. I, no. I was just looking at Morris Chestnut, and that was really I'm going to be honest with you. The scenes that I don't have commentary mostly have to do with, <laughs> with him being in the scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, it's either... Right. It's either I won't have any commentary, or when the scene comes up, I'm going to magically find commentary, but it's just going to be about him. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the, the next okay. scene, they go to um, back to the lab. Yes. And Bones, Bones says she's going to go get facts. So she goes to the lab, I mean, goes to the, the club to go get facts, and they're using a camera to look behind the wall to mm-hmm. see what's there. And um, they realize that they have to tear it down to see what's behind it. Yes. And during the scene, they were kind of talking about, like, you know, the whole dancing at the club mm-hmm. and whatnot. And Zach makes a comment saying he looks like a marionette in a windstorm when he's dancing. Like, I guess that's what someone told him. And I was like, dude, same. I suck at dancing. See, my thought about that scene was when he said he doesn't understand it, a bunch of people gyrating in a circle. Like, that makes me think of Panda, because Panda doesn't want to go to a club to dance. She goes for the food. I really do. You got happy hour going on? Honey, I will be there just to eat that food. Mm -hmm. My girls will be coming with me, and we'll just be like, okay, they want to go dancing. I'm like, but is it happy hour? Can I sit at the bar eating this half-priced food while I watch y'all? My drinks are a dollar, and my wings are two dollars. And she doesn't even... I'm living. And she doesn't even drink alcohol. I don't. She just goes there to eat. I don't give a damn about the alcohol. (laughs) Maybe the most, maybe strawberry daiquiri. Maybe all the chick drinks in the world. Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple is not even alcoholic. (laughs) But you could make it alcoholic. You could make a dirty Shirley Temple. Honestly, that phrase sounds horrible. Incredibly, but I believe that's what it's called. I don't like that. That feels wrong. We're sorry, Shirley Temple. I mean, obviously, she has passed away, so she's not a child. She's not a child, but still, it feels wrong. Well, either way, just get me like a pina colada. Oh, I'm down with that. You see, yeah, it does. Yeah, (laughs) but (laughs) the drinks don't matter unless it 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 has to be half. It has to be happy hour, okay? The food, the drinks. Otherwise, I don't want to go. I know. True. It'd be like that. 
It do be like that sometimes. And that's where I am. I'll just sit there and be like, yeah, y'all dance. Or they be like, come on, we're going to go dance. And I'm like, can I bring this food with me, though? Mm -hmm. Can I go stand at the dance floor? I will stand in the middle of the dance floor eating my food. And scene. Lit. (laughs) (laughs) So then um, at Booth's office. Yes. Roy's father. Roy's the victim. Roy Taylor. DJ Mounts. His his father visits Booth. Um, Mm -hmm. He brings a box of medals and trophies, basically saying that. His son wasn't involved in a lifestyle that would have contributed to his death the way that the media is portraying it to be. And Booth oh, yeah. basically promises he's going to find out what's gonna what happened to his kid. Which I think is nice. I like how Booth was like letting him talk. Like, Booth understood what the father mm-hmm. was going to do. Mm-hmm. And Booth probably gets it a lot in general, but I gl- I'm glad he was just like, I understand. Yeah. I hear I will, you. I will give praise to this scene, and then I will give criticism. Okay. All right, let's go. So my praise to this scene is that it was very emotional. Like, the guy who plays Roy's father is Mm -hmm. a very good actor. Um, He really emphasizes, like, a lot of the issues that happen to somebody who dies in a unique way. Mm -hmm. Like, how the press can run with a particular story. Yes. Even though it's completely untrue. Which is so true. That really does happen. Mm Mm-hmm. And I felt emotional. Like, you, when you heard him talking, you felt like he was talking about his actual son. Someone who was loved. Right. Now, my critique of this scene is that just because somebody graduated third in their class and didn't do drugs doesn't make their murder any less worthy of investigation. Interesting. Because what I feel like, I feel like, obviously... There's this idea of, like, the perfect victim, Mm -hmm. which is what most people in true crime will see as the blonde, middle-class white girl. Yeah. And they are the case that always gets investigated. They're the faces that are on milk cartons that people are interested in figuring out what what happened to them. Mm -hmm. But other victims who are seen as less desirable don't get that same treatment. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like I think about it, that's true. So in this situation, to me, what the dad is basically saying, he's like, because my son was an upstanding citizen, you should figure out what happened to him. Like, please pay attention to Mm -hmm. this case. Get justice for my son. And Booth seemed ambivalent until this scene. So to me, I'm like, Booth, just because this father talked to you about this doesn't mean that now you should investigate harder to figure out who killed him. Just because he didn't do drugs and he was a smart kid. People who do drugs and get in bad lifestyles, their lives are, are just as worthy yeah, they to figure out what too. happened. They deserve justice just as much as anyone else. Yeah. That was my critique. That was oh, your critique. And then I have a factoid. Oh, okay. So. Pickopedia? <laughs> well, kind of Pickopedia. <laughs> So when he says iniquity, like some iniquity killed my boy. Yeah. uh, Iniquity just means like gross injustice, something Mm -hmm. that was completely unfair and unwarranted. Oh, okay. I figured so. It just, it kind of made sense. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's an interesting thought. I wasn't really paying attention to how like they don't, like law enforcement or like cases just don't get much light shown onto the ones that, you know, maybe they seem like, oh, not as important, but... Yeah, it's, it's kind a, of a nice catch that you caught. I didn't really think of it like that. Yeah, it's a big problem, especially in communities um, like indigenous people, yeah. people who are in sex work. I mean, things are changing, Yeah, but especially like in the 80s and, and it's still now. I mean, obviously we're moving in a direction, but Usually it's Usually it's the minorities that, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean... It's funny because how you got that from the scene, I originally, when I first watched it, I was more along the lines of, oh, he didn't want him to think like his son was this certain way, like don't assume my son was this way. And, you know, he deserved better. So Mm -hmm. don't put him in this type of light because of what the tabloids are doing. That's kind of what my was more of my direction, but mm-hmm. it was interesting on your take. I'm like, oh yeah, that also makes sense. That- and I think your take is correct, mm-hmm. but the problem mm-hmm. with that is, is it's like it's, there's more to it. Yeah, it was more along the lines of 
please solve this case. Make it more of an importance mm-hmm. to you like it is to me. Yeah. And I think that in reality, that should be the message to every officer. Like, this person, even if even if he wasn't this model like citizen. Like it wasn't a high profile case either. M- most people have people that love them. Yes. And even if they don't, even if somebody's all alone and... And, I believe even you know the people who are not most likely to be loved. I still believe someone loves them, though. Yeah, I believe, and they deserve justice. Yes, mm-hmm. all of them do. And it sucks when they can't solve it. Absolutely. And so, moving on to that one, we go behind the wall. Yes. <laughs> so Bones and Zach go behind the wall with another FBI agent. I'm assuming he's a part of the crime scene investigation I guess, team. But dude, this scene had me <laughs> dying. They go behind the wall and they find a piece of jewelry in the pipe. Yes. You know. So before they found the jewelry, what got me is when they first walked in, you know, the FBI agent is just like, you know, we need to follow protocol, blah, blah, blah. And Zach's like, you know, we're better at this than you think. <laughs> and then he's like, you know, what? You know what those are? And Bones is like, rats. And Zach's like, what? You're trying to just, you're trying to scare us with rats? We go mm-hmm. to places where the rats eat the laces right out of our boots. Mm-hmm. And then I think he made a comment, like something Willard. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> so I didn't understand the reference either. But apparently it's a movie from 1971. Okay. And what it's about it? this guy. Named Willard? Named Willard. <laughs> who has these pet rats. What? Who, um, who basically... He's like he's like the Doctor Doolittle for these rats. What's the name of this movie? Willard. Seriously, legit. <laughs> and he uses he uses his rats to torment people and get back at the people who feel like he feels like he's that have wronged him. So karma. He uses his rats for karma. Now this movie from the just from the trailer it looks a little silly. But I need it to also watch this trailer. Yeah, it also looks creepy as hell at the exact same time. Okay. Like I wouldn't watch it at night. All I'm thinking. So, if you watched Avatar: The Last Airbender, I'm gonna go back to this all the time. There is a <laughs> scene because there's some water benders there, and there's a scene where the water benders to bend water. You ho- you have to have water there. And mm-hmm. the Fire Nation is trying to keep this water bender as a prisoner. So they keep the water away. And she learns that she can blood bend because, you know, there's water. I think was this was the only episode that I've seen. <laughs> Guys, don't kill her. Please don't no, kill I'm her. No, I'm planning on watching it. I just she plans never on got watching. around to it. We actually plan to make, like, hopefully maybe, like, a episode or two, or maybe a couple episodes on Avatar. We want to mm-hmm. do, like, a segment on it Basically, she hasn't as, gone to it. Mm-hmm, as a panda is a... Avatar, the last airbender fanatic. veteran fanatic, <laughs> and I, the noob, yeah. thought it would might be an interesting concept. Let yes. us know if you'd be interested. Please do. Let us know. And yes, I would add in Korra as well. I do have thoughts as well. And the comics and everything all out of the above. But anyways, going back to what I was saying is that there is a scene where this waterbender, she's, you know, deprived of the water, and she actually finds out she can blood bend. And she's doing it on rats. And what she does is she practices on rats until there's like a full moon to where she feels the strongest. Because that's how it is for the waterbenders in the show. They're the most strongest when there's like a full moon at night. So how she, what she does is she ends up escaping after practicing on rats. She ends up doing it to humans. This sounds scary as hell. It is a very scary episode, and everyone knows it who's watched Avatar. It's the Puppet Master episode. Sheesh. It's insane. It gave me nightmares when I first watched it, but I love that episode so much. Nickelodeon. Gotta love them. Nickelodeon. <laughs> Sometimes I don't think y'all are for kids. <laughs> there are some episodes I'm like, that. I don't know about that one. Interesting. <laughs> but so I love it. On the to watch list, Willard and Avatar the Last Airbender. Yes. And if you guys want us to do some reviews or maybe do like a watch along or something, let us know because we would be more than happy to mm-hmm. do that. We are at your will. Yes. We bow down to you all. 
Mm -hmm. (laughs) So So then they go back to the lab and they learn that the jewelry is a belly button ring that says love rules um, that it was ripped out of another victim or suspect Mm -hmm. and from the damage to inside of Roy's lips they see that he actually was smothered and was murdered dun 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 Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I'm going to (laughs) die. Don't do that. (laughs) So what what got me though is I was like, geez, Angela, while they're looking at this belly button ring, Angela is still going at it about Tessa. She knows exactly what she's doing. She knows. Oh my god. Like, (laughs) she plays off as helpful or inquisitive, but she's laying the groundwork for a breakup. Yes. Like even there was a point where Angela was telling Booth like, oh. You should get Tessa a belly button ring. It's not too much commitment, don't you think? She is she is the instigator. She really is. Like, she went and inserted herself where there were no problems yes. and made problems. She really did. We're just like, Angela, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. But when I first found out it was a belly button ring, I was like, ow. Dude, I, ow. Can't, I can't think about it. God. It's too much. painful. My other thought was like, the way this man died is so <laughs> horrific. Like yeah. it's heartbreaking. And it's it's horror. It sucks. Like, smothered while you're wedged behind a wall. So like, like not stuck. only you're like claustrophobic in a space, but someone smothers you. Like dang <sighs> that, and you're trying to run away with like. Was he running after her or running with her? I think he was running with her. Yeah, that sucks because you love this girl and you're running with her, and then boom, death. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It sucks. <laughs> so now that they know that the jewelry says love rules, they go to see DJ Rules at his mm-hmm. studio. And he <laughs> he reveals that Roy tried to diss him on one of his songs. Yeah. And that the belly ring belonged to Eve Warren, who is DJ Rules' ex. And but, now it's the victim's new girlfriend. Yep. And... When you first see, like, the opening scene of it, it's Soul Survivor. And like you hear Gigi. Akon. It's featuring Akon. It does feature Akon. But all I'm focusing on is Akon. That was I'm my like, first thought, too. I'm like, I miss you, dude. I, was I like, miss you and your long ass name. I was like, is that Akon I right. hear? We got Chris Brown. Now we got Akon. It's 2005, baby. I swear. It's good times. I swear. Oh, gosh. Or, okay, so what got me is the way Booth is trying to talk to Rose. Oh, ab- I'm no, just like... Don't, dude. <sighs> why? Booth, don't do it. Why? Like, there's a part where he's like, oh, he even says... Because um, they're like... I think Booth was asking him a question. And he was like, so? And Booth is like, so? Murder is whacked. With mm. an E-D, guys. And an then- E-D at the end. Like, not mm. whack, whack and then, and then when he's showing... <laughs> Uh, DJ rules the wedding ring. He's like, she had your ring, and I was like, Booth, don't, don't. If you don't talk like that on the regular, don't, don't add do it in it. now. Just because you're talking to a rapper, that's gross. Yes, make it stop. That's illegal. Straight to jail. <sighs> Go to jail. Straight to jail. Goodbye. You canceled. You selling uh, <laughs> too much for sweaters. Straight to jail. Yeah, no stop. Booth. <laughs> I like. <laughs> I like how the like they're like oh, was it Miss America or something like um, Miss Universe? Like they were so, complimenting Bones. So Rules saw Bones walk in and he's like, oh, are we recruiting from America's Next Top Model? Now? Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> I was like, oh wow! And this is an episode where everyone starts asking, like, where did you get her? Mm-hmm. He's like the museum. That's my favorite, like, perfect catchphrase. They're all like, where did you find her? The museum. Museum. (laughs) That's what happened. I liked it a lot. (laughs) Me too. It was a a funny scene. (laughs) And, um... And then even at the end of the scene, you see how Bones, like, doesn't even want to leave because she's, like, really into the music. I love love that they made Bones, like, hip-hop. Yes. And then even in the car. Mm Because they're just, you know, they're driving to the lab. So then they go in the car. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They start driving to the lab, and Booth is like doing all these scenarios, talking about it to Bones. And what got me is like, he turns on the radio, and even then, Bones changed his music. Yes. And he's like, Did you change my music? 
No comment. She just kind of looks away. Just keeps nodding her head. Like mm-hmm. I don't think I'm people. This music. I don't think people appreciate just how funny Bones is. She's hilarious. I she kills me. I she yes. I just die every time. She just does things, and I'm just like I love it. Yes. But if you guys ever want to know how Pig is, Pig is a lot like Bones. So. Oh. It's actually quite, it's very fun, because I have, like, my real-life bones right next to me. It's hilarious. I don't see it, but I trust you. <sighs> Even my mom sees it. <laughs> well, I trust you and your mom with my life, so these are, it must be these true. Because we both are, like, we both have bones, but we're like, this is a lot like pig. So you're saying <laughs> that you love me? Yes! I oh. love you so much. Oh my god. So much love. I just... I didn't prepare anything. I didn't have enough time to write a speech. It's because we found out we were loved today. (laughs) We're loved. We're loved. (laughs) So then moving on, we're right back at the lab. Yes. And Zach Zach finds an indentation in the skull. Yes. And they're basically trying to determine if it was a result of trauma or if it was some kind of genetic disorder. Yes. And what was interesting is this is the first time we hear that Zach is from Michigan, and mm-hmm. he has three brothers and four sisters that we never get to see. No, we see them. When? Um. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's that Christmas episode. The man in the fallout shelter. Yes. But then after that, I never see them. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably why they're not memorable. They don't talk. I mean, they're... They're... I don't remember any other times they're mentioned. I kind of would have liked if Zach went to Michigan and we kind of saw a little bit of it. Or maybe like an interaction with him and his family I just a little want, more. I just want more of Zach in general. Yeah, I agree. Because I even forgot for a hot second. Like, oh yeah, we never see them. JK, follow shelter one. The man in the follow shelter. God, that one's to die for. <sighs> We'll get there, guys. We'll get there. Don't don't start on it. Don't start. I'm staring off into the distance again. <sighs> don't just start. thinking we're, about we're, it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We <laughs> promise, because we know everyone loves that one. We all. Love oh yeah. That there's there's a there's a whole Reddit thread <laughs> talking about a specific moment from that episode. Guys, remember we're on Reddit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we try to be involved and oh my gosh the the bones reddit forum is amazing if you haven't been on it there are always people posting on there everyone is so helpful so insightful they're so creative and a lot of smart thoughts (laughs) oh my gosh and even different thoughts and sometimes you see episodes in different lights that you didn't see before i love that if you've never been on reddit get on reddit and get on the bones forum because you're missing out do it do it it's amazing (laughs) so yeah then they moved on to the next scene Yep. So they visit Eve's brother. Yeah. So he works at a dance studio. Or they're crumping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let me explain the scene first, and then I'll get to my thoughts. Okay. okay. I gotta get over the crumping. Dude. So, so George is Eve's brother, and he's the last one who saw her about six weeks ago. He dropped off her she daughter. She dropped off her oh, daughter yes. to him with mm-hmm. some money. Yeah, and she left often. Like that, but this time she said she was turning her life around and she was cleaning up. And um, Roy promised Eve that he was going to take her out of D.C. and give her a better life. Yeah. So. <laughs> so That's it. We're at the dance studio and this is happening. The dancing. It the reminds clumping. me. It reminds me of Bring It On, All or Nothing. Oh my god, you did not go there. Okay, and you know what scene I'm talking about. Yes. Where they're having the dance off, yes. right? Yes. And as children, when we watched the scene, we really thought they were doing something. Okay. Kind of like raise your voice. Yes. We thought like, oh, okay. it's lit. It's not lit. So there's a scene in Raise Your Voice where Hilary Duff um, <laughs> stands up to sing a solo. And there are about 30 different voices that pop up as she changes from each note. Each pitch is changing. And, and it's as a kids, different voice. And, it's, and uh, we were... We were, we were <laughs> When we first watched her, we're like, oh my gosh, she's so good. Watch it now. Mm. Those aren't all her voices. No. So, in parallel with the all or nothing, bring it on scene, they're they're dancing. And as when you're first seeing it when you're younger, you're thinking, wow, this is so cool. When you see it when you're older, you're like, this is a train wreck. And when you watch TV shows or movies where they're not really dancing and they didn't really have choreography, you can tell by the camera angles 
if they're showcasing somebody who can really dance, right? they're going to show the wide angle or close up of that person dancing. Here, they cut back and forth to these people doing gyrating, seizing, I don't know what. I was like, make it stop, make it stop. What is happening? I was like, don't do, don't do it. Just Crump, stop. Yeah, it's crumping. Uh, I mean, crumping is a thing, but what they were doing was not it. It did not look like crumping. Mm-mm, I don't but, think so. But, I mean, if the crumping community wants to let us know that this is really crumping, then feel free to let us know, and we just will be educated, and we apologize in advance. But if it's not, I feel offended for you guys. I do. <laughs> and But the other thing I noticed about this scene is, so Booth is asking George about dj mount Mm -hmm. and the first thing he mentions is his music he's like oh yeah he does good music he's good for the kids but i'm like but you know that he (laughs) he was gonna take your sister away and marry her and the first thing you mention about you know about him is his music you think he'd be like oh yeah he's dating my sister and i really like his music no it's oh his music is really great oh yeah and by the way I didn't even catch that, but you're not wrong. It was weird. That's actually kind of funny. I don't know if it's a writing thing, but it just, it felt weird. I wonder if it's like, maybe it's the actor that was trying to say it that way from what he could remember and they just rolled with it. Mm -hmm. But realistically, yeah, he would be like, oh yeah, he's dating my sister. But his music is cool too, by the way. Mm -hmm. The first thing is like, yeah, his music's cool. It's clean. It's good for the kids. We play it here all the time. Mm-hmm. And by the way, he's dating my sister. Mm-hmm. He doesn't mention that until after he knows that he's dead. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> Weird. So then we move on to the next scene. On to the next one. Yes. And Hodgins finds that the same meth is on the money that Eve gave to her brother. Mm-hmm. Meaning that she was with Roy when he died. Booth- and <laughs> Boothman trying to get everybody to... To do scenarios with him, to walk yes. it through, to talk it out. And everybody will not give him the time of day. Nope. But this time, Hodgins was like, I focus on bugs and slime. And he's like, no, come on, try it out. And he actually tries it out. Mm-hmm. And they, then he goes back to bugs and slime. It was clearly a bonding moment. And yes. you see, they both didn't hate it. They didn't. And it was nice. I it was liked very it. nice. But <laughs> So, and then <laughs> from that, we go to... Angela's room, the mm-hmm. office, where they see the Angelator. Yeah, and they're trying to figure out more about maybe what happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bones is icked out. Actually, no, they weren't at the Angelator. They were just on her lap. Oh, computer. yeah. That her, JK. At her desktop. Yep. Yeah. And Bones was icked out. Yes. By that. Because of the belly button ring was mm-hmm. being ripped out. What I don't understand is how I can watch movies like train to busan right (laughs) yeah where it's clearly gory and it's gross yeah but the idea of someone's belly button ring getting ripped out of their stomach (laughs) horrifies me like they're they're i try to look it up to see if it's a thing really mine is more eyeballs like if you're messing with someone's eye like there's a movie called um would you rather it has that girl from pitch perfect what is her name? I don't remember her name, but it's the chick, the redhead in Pitch Perfect. She's Anna actually, Kendrick? No, 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 the other redhead. The other Ginger. Redhead. Ah, yes. Whatever her name is. I don't know her name. I for, uh, Brittany, Brittany Snow? I think it's Brittany Snow. I think it is Brittany Snow. So she's in uh, Would You Rather, one of the versions of Would You Rather, and she's blonde, and there's a part where, in the movie, where they're trying to make them, like, poke, like, some type of glass in their eye. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, eyeball stuff. No. Absolutely no, no, not. No, 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 Or I'm, like Saw movies. Mm, I'm also like that with fingernails. Like, really? if there's a movie or something where they're like, oh, we're going to rip off your fingernails one by one. I'm like, oh. Or ooh. bones snapping, like, <sighs> in the middle of scenes. Like, was it Don't Be Afraid of the Dark where the mom's, like, ankle or her, uh, what Oh, is, no, not the like, ankles. I don't know if it's the ankle. It's above the ankle, like between the knee and the foot. What is this piece of leg called? 
I don't your know. Your shin? No, not the shin. <laughs> is it the shin? Wait, what was the parts again? Sorry, I wasn't it's listening. Between the knee and the foot. Is yeah, it really it's the a shin? shin. Okay, well, either way, something around those lines, it gets snapped, and then Yikes. she starts, sh- she's screaming, and she gets pulled mm. in. That literally mortified me. I'm like, okay, so I guess Ooh. bone snapping and eyeballs is Ooh. what do it for me. Something non-gory that rubs me the wrong way is when you see girls wearing heels in a movie and they fall, but their ankle, like, they fall on the side of their foot. Yeah. That's personal. Really? Like, to me, because of how many times I've twisted my ankle, (laughs) like, I just relive it. She is notorious for (laughs) twisting that ankle, y'all. Anytime I see someone fall on their ankle like that, I'm, I have PTSD, I swear. I mean, yeah. Or, oh, you know, in Breaking Dawn. Twilight Breaking Dawn. Oh, the you pregnancy. When, the pregnancy one. The and back break. She, oh my oh. god. The bone breaking sound. I was like, yo, I don't you know, know if I could do that. Stephanie Meyer does not write or contribute to the romance genre. She's a straight up horror writer. That's hilarious. Think about it. Okay. The- <laughs> Stephanie Meyer is the writer of Twilight, <laughs> so- and she does <laughs> Here's horror. a tangent. Here's a tangent, guys. Sorry. Okay. Here's- Detour. Here is my argument, which there are people who agree with me, that Twilight should actually be horror instead of romance. You have this hundreds-year-old dude who somehow convinces this boring-ass girl to be inexplicably in love with him, even though he could eat her. Honestly, it could be so perfect. It could have been like a perfect horror movie. It's honestly, they should rebrand it. And then you could have, like, Jacob trying to see if, like, maybe, oh, no, we want to eat her instead. <laughs> and they fight Dude. over eating her. But then Edward falls in love, but All still, right. he still wants to eat someone her. Someone get on AO3, someone get on Wattpad and make this happen. Come on, guys. Make our dreams come true. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> so going back to Bo. <laughs> Sorry. We apologize. We had to. We had to talk about that. Because the... Because... When oh sorry last was, last thing what is it last part of my tangent so I said like those things freak me out yeah. but like the scene in Underworld <laughs> where Victor gets his head sliced in half and it just slides <laughs> off it's so satisfying I feel like anyone is getting their head sliced off like uh, was it Ghost Ship they all get sliced in half in the beginning yeah, yeah true and all the right. little girl sees the head. Of the guy, I think he's the captain. His head gets chopped off and it falls off. True, true. Okay, let's leave. <laughs> let's leave pop culture corner. Yes, <laughs> back to bones. I, we apologize. We apologize. Please forgive us. But now let us lead Thousands into apologies. Let us lead into simping territory. Well, hold on, hold on. I wanted to also bring up when so Bone was feeling sick when she watched the scenario of you know Eve's belly button getting ripped out. Mm-hmm. I think it was really cute how Booth is validating bones for feeling that way because angela's like you deal with dead bodies and this is what grosses you out and booth is like no i get it you know sometimes blah 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 mm-hmm. words and i was like oh that's actually kind of cute how he's literally validating the way she feels that was super insightful dr phil right <laughs> good job <laughs> oh, thank you now right. simping Time to simp and swoon. Simp and swoon. Ooh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Let's make that a thing. It's we time feel, to simp and swoon. We feel like that all we do in our podcast is sw- simp and swoon all day, every day. For over our, Hodgins, over Booth. Even Bones and Angela. Mm-hmm. Like, it just, it happens, guys. It just happens. If you don't like it, skip it. But if you're here for it, you about simp to with us. hear about Morris Chestnut. Okay. So, so let me talk about the scene, and then we can just talk about him existing. Okay, okay. 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 So he plays Special Agent Ronald Oakes. So he is the character that he is is the employee of Randall Hall, mm-hmm. but which is the record label producer, producer with the cane. He's mm-hmm. holding the cane all the time. Yeah, and basically he's an undercover operative who is trying to figure out the meth trade among the music industry. Mm-hmm. And Booth recognized that he was undercover, and he arrested him, quote-unquote, to not blow his cover, but to bring him in and ask him about what's going on behind the scenes and who killed Roy. Right. Mm-hmm. 
But honestly, you know how many times it took us to watch that scene to figure out what was happening? Like, yeah, a lot. We were too distracted. Like, he, Morris Chestnut is okay. just so handsome, guys. He's he's in every movie, but... He literally almost have any movie his, I could think his, of. His breakout role was in Boys in the Hood. Yep. As Ricky. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. And then, just, he ends up having all these other movies. Like, I remember watching the game plan all the time. I'm like, oh, he's so sweet. Man is loyal. Like, even according to Wikipedia... He's been married to his wife, Pam, since 1995, and they have two kids. Their names are Grant and Paige, and I'm just like, dang, commitment, Mm -hmm. you was loyal. I want it. (laughs) What did I say earlier? You were like, man, I wish I was Pam. Yeah, I think we should all be Pam. Yeah, she was saying that. Can I be Pam for a day? (laughs) Please, let me be Pam. (laughs) And like, oh, there was was it the perfect guy when he was in that mm, movie? That movie got me heated. But there was him and the other guy. What was his name? But he is good looking too. Hold on. He is so hot. He's he's the oh light my skin. gosh. We were just like, whoa. The I don't know how to feel in this movie. Guy, I feel like, like his name is on the tip of my tongue. I always forget it, but I know he's in so much things. Like it's mm, just like Michael wow. Ely. Yes, that was his name. That Gorgeous. movie, I had so many mixed thoughts because I'm like, they're both beautiful. What do we do? I was pissed. At, well, I'm not going to spoil it. Don't spoil that. Don't but the ending that. has me heated. Yes. Don't it do that to my man. heated. We were, mm-mm. Good movie. I mean, yes. basically, it's, a, there are so many movies. I call it the fatal attraction genre. I think they're even making another one. That's basically. pretty much, that's literally what it is. It's just a fatal attraction movie. That's honestly yeah. what it is. There are so You guys so should many. give it a watch. It's, it's. It's worth watching at least once. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I was telling Pig earlier, I was like, I could see Morris Chestnut being like the definition of being tall, dark, and handsome. Mm. Like, I feel like it fits him very well. Yeah. My, my thoughts of when I, when I watched this scene mm-hmm. was that, like, I found it entertaining. Like, it, like, <sighs> Words? They weren't Are flirting. You okay? I'm like trying to think of how to explain this because it's not like they were flirting, but it was like this cool guy exchange where it's like I'm oh, hot. like they go they bounce back off of each other very well. Yeah, where they're like, like that chemistry, but it's like you know like the bro code type yeah. of thing. It's like I'm or hot homies. and you're hot, and let's, let's be hot about, together. Yeah, let's talk about cool and hot we are, and yes. that's all that I heard. But- Literally, I'm just like watching, like <laughs> you're so pretty. And you're so pretty. Y'all so handsome. Mm-hmm. And we be simping and swooning. And then I'll look at Pick. I'll be like, wait, what just happened in this scene? I know. Rewind. Okay, watching, watching. Oh, but then he's in this. Rewind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if I have to say something that isn't about their beauty, um, I don't know whether or not that's how it would go down in real life. Because he's like undercover. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he would have arrested him or not. Right. I don't know about that. He even so had don't him, like, handcuffed, too, when he had him in there, so. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, know, so don't ask me. <laughs> so then we move on to the next scene. Are, are you okay to move on to the next scene? I mean, if we have to. Okay. Oh, well, we have to move on to the next scene. <laughs> okay, fine. So mm-hmm. Bones and Booth, they mm-hmm. um, talk to um, Randall Hall and confront him on the fact that his real name is Terrence Baskin, which is information that Agent Oaks gave them. Uh-huh. All I think of is Carol Baskin. <clears throat> That's literally my only comment for this scene, is <laughs> Carol Baskin. Oh, God. That's all I thought of. <laughs> That's the only thing I think of. Um, <sighs> so, basically, Booth suspects him, and Terrence Baskin, a.k.a. Randall Hall... The record label producer. Mm-hmm. Basically, he's saying that... Tries to point the finger more towards Eve... Yeah. You know? Yes, yeah. So, and uh. He, uh, but they also, and even DJ Rules, so they basically, he basically tells them that, you know, Rules built a, uh, a new studio right after Roy died, and kind of leads them to go look over there. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like that. Honestly, <laughs> I, all I could think of is I'm like, Carol Baskin. <laughs> 
Pretty much. Like, that was my thought, too. And then I had the TikTok song going on my head about it. That's all I thought of on it. Killed her husband, whacked him. <laughs> Same. Literally, that's all I thought of. Because I was just like, oh, yeah. Go, go watch Tiger King and figure it out. It was a little, but, so in this scene in Bones, I was just like, he did it. The record label producer, I was yeah. like, he did it. Oh, it's he obvious. He totally did it. Like, him trying to point this finger at someone else, he did it. There's mm-hmm. no way. Mm-mm. So then they found out, like... Um, so then they go to the um, yes. the recording studio, and Bones brings along her friend, Maggie, who has a cadaver dog. Mm-hmm. Named Tootie. Named Tootie. And they use Tootie to find Eve's body. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love Tootie. I want to pet Tootie. Mm-hmm. Tootie's so cute. Yeah, and she comments, so Booth, she is, very, dying, Booth is very skeptical about cadaver dogs in this scene. And Maggie... Specifically Tootie. Because <laughs> she's like, oh, Tootie's drooling. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, your eyes are too close together, but you don't hear me comment. Yeah. She's I was like, like, so okay. what Tootie drools? Like, what's your deal? I like, felt that burn. It was so funny. But and I'm just sitting here wrong. like, man, the shots fired at Booth just continues. Like, people just keep going at it with Booth. His personal <laughs> life, mm-hmm. people won't throw him a bone, and now someone's like, tell him, hey, your eyes are kind of close together. Like, dang. They Can are, you catch a break? <laughs> but it's okay. They're close <sighs> together, but he's still beautiful. He is. He is. It's but, okay, though. But, I um, love you, David Boreanaz. <laughs> but for the... So, Cadaver are... Hmm. Cadaver, cadaver dog. I'm getting better. I'm stuttering less, I it's, promise. It's okay. Your brain thinks too fast for it your is. mouth. It, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, cadaver dogs are actually pretty awesome. They can smell human bodies through concrete. So, mm. in 2017, uh, a cadaver dog in Pennsylvania was able to find four missing men Underneath 12 and a half feet of uh, underground. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Was there like, could it be any type of dog? Um, I think there are, there are certain type of breeds that do better. Like a Yorkshire Terrier is probably not going to be able to do that. <laughs> Let's be honest here. But if um, it's like a big, big dog. I think it probably depends on the their, breed maybe, their smelling ability. Some dogs are known to be better at smelling things than others. Which makes sense. Okay, I could see that. Mm-hmm. But in this situation, they show, like, oh, yeah, Tootie's really good. And Booth is just like, hmm. Mm-hmm. And Tootie's indication of where the body was is when she laid down. Mm-hmm. And Booth is like, oh, great. You're going to take a nap? Are you lazy? <sighs> what happened? They're like, she found it. Yep. So they found another body at the studio. Which is Eve's body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they take it back to the lab to figure out that it's Eve and that her cause of death is the same as Roy's. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, the way that they describe... Well, it wasn't the same way. It's they found there was an indentation is the oh, same y- yes, on she had- both of their bodies. How they died is not the same, but they found out that there's an indentation right. in both of them. That's the same. So, obviously, it's not going to be... Was it biological? It's not hereditary. Yeah, it's not genetic. Yeah, it's not genetic, but it's um, definitely something external that did that. Mm-hmm. And um, Tess is there at the lab, too. And, and Angela she- is mm-hmm. seriously messing with them. <laughs> Tess is bringing Booth a shirt, and they're talking about how they decided to go on a vacation to Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And Angela is basically like, oh, so this is the pre-shacking up test vacation. Yep. And just totally... She's seriously messing with them. Like, mind karate their brains. Like, oh my gosh. What are you doing, Angela? You don't have to put your foot she, there, but she is. She's doing it because she knows her good friend needs to be with this guy. I don't blame her. And if not the good friend, she would have wanted to be with him. I mean, <laughs> not wrong. I don't think they would have been a good match, though, to be honest. No, I don't think so either. But but Bones Booth and Angela, <laughs> they go back to run scenarios again. Yeah. And they figure out how Eve was murdered. Mm-hmm. And um, Bones says that her wrist was broken. And they figure out that DJ Rules couldn't have done it because he has nerve damage in, in his, his right hand. hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they go to the interrogation room. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so oh my god this scene had me dying <laughs> so they go to they they pick up dj rules in the interrogation room even though they know he couldn't have done it they know that he knows whatever happened so he reveals that roy was going to switch labels and which gives randall hall motive for murder oh. um he just needed to get the money to buy out mm-hmm. so rules he tries to negotiate to get locked up for the sake of his reputation. That way his sales go up. Mm-hmm. That way, because you already have DJ Mount, his <clears throat> sales are going off the charts because he just died. So if uh, DJ Rules ends up going to jail, mm-hmm. his sales will go up through the roof too because they'll be like, oh, he has something to do with it. Let me buy his tracks. <laughs> yes. And Rules basically reveals that it was Randall Hall's idea to give him the new studio, made him pay for it, Mm -hmm. and he poured the concrete the day after even Roy went missing. Yeah. During this scene, though, I was dying because i'm just like dj rolls excitement he's like yeah yeah let me go to jail like i'm like okay look at him with his bow wow vibes all right okay like he's cute he's cute he's adorable and you you can tell he's he's one of those rappers who who's like not a true who's who's like never been involved in crime before but needs to boost up his street cred right (laughs) it's really what it is and it's so funny because booth gets it he's like oh yeah i'll lock you up in jail we could do this for you and Mm -hmm. bones is like what am i in like opposite like reverse world or something like that yes and she was trying to understand what was happening and when she tried dj rules is like where did you find her and again booth goes museum you know, that's the second time they said that this episode. <laughs> it was so funny. It killed me. I, I love it. Every time they do it, I just love it. <laughs> yeah, it was adorable. <laughs> oh, and then, gross. so basically, they get, the, they get the information that they need. Yep. And um, they go back to the lab. Back to the lab. And Zach finds that the same mark that is on Eve, I mean, that's on uh, Roy's skull, is the same mark that's on Eve. And, um, <clears throat> Booth is like talking about different scenarios of what yes. could have happened. It's being saying that they were trying to, you know, start a new life together. Yeah. And he starts to feel more emotionally invested because he sees that Randall Hall is really the one who did it. And he's frustrated because Randall Hall is basically untouchable. Mm-hmm. That's the whole reason why they have like an undercover agent over there trying to, you know, catch him. With and the whole, that, was mm-hmm. it the meth trading? They were trying to figure out that situation with yep. the drug trades. And as we know from the episode of A Boy in a Tree, mm-hmm. Booth really hates it when a suspect is supposedly untouchable. Yep. There's nothing he hates more. Yep. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to go spread the pain. Mm-hmm. So he decides to go bother <laughs> <laughs> and Bones is like, I can spread pain. I and can come. She runs after him, starts falling. I'm like, I can do it too. I can do it too. And they're so cute. Yeah. So now they're at the studio. <laughs> so then they, they go back to the studio to confront Randall Hall. Mm-hmm. And um, basically they're saying that they pose the scenario that Hall did it. And they say that the studio is an active crime scene. Yeah. So Booth tells um, Randall Hall, he's like, I'm going to harass you. Yeah. And Bones kind of has the epiphany that the marks on their heads are from his cane. Because there's a point where Randall Hall decides to, like, because he's getting pissed off at Booth, so he takes his cane and he kind of, like, puts it on him, like, up against his chest. He pokes him. He pokes him. And Booth is just like, did he just poke me? <laughs> did he just poke me with his little stick? <laughs> and I was like, dude... I want to stick because you hear Randall Hall going, if I want to poke someone, I'm going to do it. Honestly, that part pisses me off. Like, because, like, if someone were to do that to me, I'd be so pissed off. Like, there's certain things somebody could do that would really get me heated. And it's poking you? It's poking like that or, like, someone pulling the earbuds out of your ear. Okay, pulling earbuds out of my ear, that heats me. Poking me, I don't really care for. But poking like that. Poke that, yeah. I, it's more for me. It's like earbuds, or like you take my food. Don't take my food. Yeah. I'll get mad if you take my. Or you turn off my show. 
Mm. Or you changed my favorite song. Turn into your lane without using their turn signal. God, I hate stupid people. <laughs> Use your signal, guys. Gosh. You just mm-hmm. go and cut people off and, like, you know, you could cause an accident. Cheese and crackers is not that hard. Mm-hmm. But yes. <laughs> I'm going to poke those people with a stick. <laughs> I'm going to poke them exactly that way. <laughs> it's, a cool, it's a cool cane, though. It is a cool cane to an extent. And then you see how he uses it. It's kind of like, the way he does it is like bitch made, though. Look at him. He's just like, mm-hmm. hmm, I got a stick and I'm going to poke you with it. Because he thinks he's all bad. But it's so funny that that's what he uses. And he's also- not like, I'm going to pull out a gun and be like, here you go. I'm the realest one here. But nah, he got a stick. True. Well, he has his um, employee, Mr. Chestnut, yeah, to so, have his whatever, gun. whatever. But um, the part where they're trying to figure out how to confiscate the cane from him, that they have to arrest him. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that's then he was like, um, this will never hold up in court. He could arrest him for that. I mean, technically, he meets the elements. Booth is an officer, and he assaulted him. Mm-hmm. Technically, it's a battery. Yeah. Because, um, there was, he actually did it. He actually poked him with the, um, stick. And technically a battery is just unwanted touching. So like, so like, I could go to you and slap you on the arm and technically <laughs> that's a battery. Now, whether or not that goes to court and you actually get charged with it is a different story. <laughs> but technically that's a battery. Oh, all right. Not assault, but battery. I mean, assault is... It's the <laughs> definitions don't make sense. I can get into it another time about <laughs> assault we'll versus Peter battery. Doing it later. <laughs> but um but just know that technically you he could arrest him for that. I could see that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So then we move on. <laughs> <laughs> we move on and we're back at the lab once back again. The lab. <laughs> oh god, here Angel and Bones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're discussing Booth and Tessa's relationship. Uh, yep. And Angela's like, they're just, I, she... She Ange- talks about these steps in well, the relationship. Well, first what happens is she says that she called Tessa to give her um, travel ideas for Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And Tessa tells Angela that she's not going, that something came up with work. Yep. And Angela's like, they weren't ready for step six. They weren't. She's saying that uh, they balked. Yep, and... I was um, like, what the hell was a balker? Like, okay. I looked it up, don't worry. Of course you did. Because I'm just like, you have bones. It's like, Booth is not a balker. <laughs> and I'm like, the hell is a balker? So to balk is B-A-L-K-E-R. to... B-A-L-K-E-R. Mm-hmm. Balk. To hesitate or be unwilling to accept an idea or understanding. Interesting. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's what that means. All right. I guess. <laughs> now you know. But while this is happening, you got Zach and Hodgins. They have to do an experiment to make sure, like, um, the type of force the cane puts onto someone matches the victims. Mm-hmm. And Hodgins is going to be doing it to Zach, thus starting the long history of of Zach having to be the victim in scenarios. Yes, and Zach's like, "Why am I the one that has to be? Hit? Why can't I hit you?" And they just keep bickering on and on. And Specifically, Hodgin says, because I'm vigorous and burly, and yes. you have arms like noodles. And Zach's <laughs> like, after he gets hit, Zach's like, is that all you got, burly boy? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I love these two. I love these two so much. <laughs> yeah, they're they're hilarious. This episode is truly, truly a Bones episode. Yes, definitely. But, okay, so what sucks, though, is after they do realize like oh it's a match bones decides to give all the glory to the fbi forensics team and everyone at the jeffersonian is like what the heck seriously seriously yeah, trying to play ball yeah i can see that at it the same happens. time i'm just like look at that you're you're trying to prove that they're incompetent again right <laughs> <laughs> and then the last true true scene. so then <laughs> so then they they go to their ending place they go to the chinese place uh, was it Wong Fu's? I can't remember the name. I always forget the name. I just know it's the Chinese place. Yeah, from the news uh, on the TV that you see that um, charges were placed on Hall, mm-hmm. and Booth tells 
Bones about how Tessa backed out of their vacation. Yep. And Bones is, says she's sorry. And then they kind of talk about the vacations. concept of vacations. Mm-hmm. Like when you go to a vacation. I pulled, I pulled the quotes for this. Because Bones is like saying how, like, you know, she likes vacations. He's mm-hmm. like, you actually like vacations? So, like, do you just sit on the beach and not think about skeletons? And mm-hmm. she's like, huh? <laughs> and so Booth says, when was the last time you got away? Mm-hmm. And Bones says, got away from what? And Booth says, well, Bones, you know, because what usually happens to me, I think about not coming back. And Bones says, seriously? And he stands up and he says, you know, you go with someone, you joke about no one, not going back to your real life, and the two of you laugh. And as he's walking away to leave, he's like, but when you're alone, the world is full of possibilities. Yeah. When he said those quotes, I was thinking, I was just like, you know, I feel that too sometimes where when you go away, sometimes you don't want to come back. Sometimes you just want to start sometimes, over. Sometimes, how about every time? Not always, because sometimes it's the opposite. Because sometimes I'll realize, wow, I actually hate this place oh, I'm visiting. I know what you're talking about. But compared to where I am, I'm like, I actually like where I am compared mm-hmm. to where the hell I'm visiting. So it could go both ways. It just depends on where you're going. That's or sometimes true. who you're with. That's so, true. It all depends. It's all about perspective. I think most of the time with a vacation, even if I don't want to live... At the place that I'm vacationing, it's more along the lines of, ugh, I just wish you, li- I lived life as if it was a vacation. Uh, for me, sometimes. Not always. Because it's like, if it's always a vacation, then it doesn't always feel like home. It feels like you're visiting. It feels temporary. Like, something's going to take it away. But home is where the heart is. Do I have a heart? I don't know. I haven't figured that you out yet. You have the heart in your bones. Shut up. <laughs> The following program contains themes and images that may not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Alright guys, time for a true crime segment with Pikipedia. Okie day. (laughs) So, alrighty. Did you send me the picture? I'm about to. Okay. She doesn't have a slideshow for me. So this, today, (laughs) for Pikipedia, I have the direct inspiration for this episode. So, wow. um, according to the Wikipedia, this episode um, was inspired by the death of Eduardo Sanchez in 2001. Okay. Okay. So... 2001. Um, oh, I'm sorry, 2002. 2002. Mm-hmm. Eduardo Sanchez. Yes, I sent you a picture of him. Yep. He, that's literally the only picture I could find of him. I pulled it up and then it caused static into my ears, so then I, I put it away. <laughs> um, he's hot. Can we just say that? It's very blurry. It, it's the only picture that exists. Is he the one I got? Wait. Th- what's that's Eduardo Sanchez. Okay, so it's about him. Yes. So what happened to him? Well... Let me talk about my sources real quick and my okay. frustration with this. Most of the time, the interwebs, the interwebs make it pretty easy to find out information because everybody loves true crime. So with this case, there was almost nothing. Um, wow. I, I'm not even going to say my sources. I'm just going to paste them in the description on our Instagram and in the actual episode. So if you want to check them out, a lot of it is from forums okay. that posted articles that are no longer available online. Why is and that? And the articles that are available. Because this was in the early 2000s. Okay. And um, uh, the case actually isn't a murder. Oh, okay. So, so what happened? So here's the dealio. Or supposedly isn't a murder. We don't know. Oh. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, Neither so, do I, because I have no idea what's happening yet. Okay. <laughs> so October 12th, 2002, 21-year-old Eduardo Sanchez, a.k.a. DJ Phenosis? He's supposed to be 21 in this picture? De. Yo, he does not look 21. Mm-mm. He looks older than 21, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And 
also known as Grand Master Sanchez. Grand Master Sanchez. Now, literally, that picture is from one website that briefly brings up this case and is talking about a different case. So <laughs> it, it was impossible. I hope that's him. If it's not, I don't know. All right. <laughs> so he lived in Winnipeg, Canada. Okay. Okay. Eduardo, is he from Canada? Uh, I don't know. So, you, oh my God, there's really nothing on this guy. Literally, the only thing I tell you is, is all, all that I have. know. Oh my God. Okay. I'll try I, not to ask too many questions. I have sc- scrimped and saved. You can still ask questions because I think we can still discuss it. Okay. We'll try to figure it out. Yeah, but nothing. Is he Hispanic? I don't know. <laughs> well, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eduardo sometimes worked at the Collective Cabaret as a DJ. In Canada. In Canada. And uh, he would spin records and play some drum and bass music that he had made on his home computer. So this is the early 2000s. So making your own drum and bass music on the computer is a lot different than how you do it today. (laughs) Interesting. Um, So at 12.48 in the morning, he withdrew $80 in cash from an ATM in the front entrance of the collective, the cabaret. Mm Mm-hmm. And at about 2.45 in the morning, people saw him speak with three of his friends in a car parked outside. Um, They invited him to a house party, but he said no. And he was last seen walking back toward the cabaret. So was he kind of just like a guy who just always kept himself? Uh, kind of. I mean... that's what it sounds like. It sounds like a guy who kind of just minded his business. He... Did his own thing. From what it appears, it doesn't seem like he had a lot of close friends. It seems like he maybe kept people at a distance. Okay. Um, they Anything said he, about family yet or nothing? Or literally kind of. I, I kind of get into it at the end. Okay. But not much there either, to be honest. Okay. Um, he appeared intoxicated um, when he was walking away. Okay. So... Eduardo's family and friends searched all over Winnipeg for weeks and were unable to find him. Um, The police searched the basement area of the club where Sanchez disappeared, Mm -hmm. and a small officer tried to squeeze between the walls to see if there was anything, but couldn't. Like, it was just tight spaces. Mm -hmm. So, fast forward to September 2003, so... A year later. mm Mm-hmm. Um, Winnipeg was one of the first cities to ban smoking inside restaurants, um, in the early 2000s. Okay. And so, for the last so many years, in those areas, all you smelled was cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. But now that smoking was banned, you, um, in that area, you couldn't smell cigarette smoke, but a, a new smell emerged. A Something bad was smell deteriorating. replaced it. Um, Yikes! So the neighbors who lived next to the club they noticed this foul smell for over a year, but they figured that it was stale beer and stale cigarette smoke. But it just got worse. The smell was mm-hmm. just that bad because now you don't have the smell of cigarettes to cover it. Gross! Did they smell it inside the cabaret? It was everywhere. Oh, Lord. They said sometimes it reeked of sewage when you came in in the morning. Yikes. So this was, you know, around that time. So finally there was just uh, like a Mm -hmm. ton of complaints that they decided to investigate. Yeah, they're like, enough is enough. Okay. So um, a part that kind of relates exactly back to the Bones episode is that they use a small camera Mm -hmm. from a local cleaning duct company Mm -hmm. to go behind the wall and see what's behind there. Yeah. And the police find that a body was wedged into a narrow space between the stone foundation and a newer wall in the basement of the club. What? His body was badly decomposed and nearly mummified. How did he get back there? So they so he entered the gap between the walls from an opening at one end, and somehow managed to wiggle through a 23-meter-long gap, and the space was about 20 to 60 centimeters wide. So, I don't know what that is in American. Uh, I don't know either. But it doesn't sound easy. 
Uh, and he was intoxicated when this happened. Yeah, so a meter, I know, is comparable to a yard, okay. but it's bigger. So 23 meters has got to be way more than 23 yards. Where the hell did he yards. think he was going? Where was he going? What was he doing? That is the biggest question that nobody can answer. Okay. So was it he just got stuck and died from being stuck? So for the cause of death, they never figured out why he was back there. But one theory is that he was trying to re- retrieve something that he dropped. And the police believed maybe that there was evidence that he had been drinking the night of his, dis- his disappearance. But his well, body... But he had dropped to where he kept walking forward. <laughs> 23 meters. Exactly. Like, my imagining of this is... Like, unless me. it's from above and you drop something and then you see where it is, so you squeeze in between the wedge to get there. That's yeah. different. That's a long distance to pick up something that you dropped. Because if I'm if I'm picturing this correctly... It's a it's a wall, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a narrow space between the wall. So if you're by and you drop something and maybe it it clatters and rolls, I can't see it rolling. I mean, it could. It could roll 23 meters. My only thought, I didn't think it was that. My thought was more, he's intoxicated, so he probably thought he was going the right way. To like, squeeze between that small of a space prob- when you're drunk? Well, that's the thing. He's unaware of what's happening. He Maybe he blacked out drunk and he thought he was going the right way and he just kept going oh, and going and going. I see what you going. mean. You I know see what, what I mean? mean? So, like, he's drunk, he enters in and... Assuming it's, like, a hallway or a room and, and he just around. keeps going and then he realizes he can't turn around so he just keeps going forward. That makes sense. That's um, my theory. But the body was so degraded that the quality of samples to see, like, blood alcohol levels or anything like that, there was just no point. Yeah, because it's been over, it's been a year already. Yeah. Or and, almost a year at that point. And from my research, the outcome of the tests were never made public. Seriously? Yeah. So people don't really want to talk about it. It looks like, or people just forgot about it, because that's the police so said, hey, sad. this looks more like a suicide or an accident, and that's all the information that was out there. I don't think it's a suicide. I think it was an accident. Mm-hmm. If it was a suicide, I feel like it would have been less, much of a str- Plus, he was, like, intoxicated. Mm-hmm. Well, they think. They don't know. Well... They also speculate that maybe he was using street drugs. I was going to say maybe he was on drugs but because we it don't, would make more sense. But we don't have any evidence to that. It's just a theory. Maybe he was tripping on something yeah. and thought he was going the right way. Yeah, they think that maybe he took some drugs and got really paranoid and his yes. reaction was to hide. My thoughts is, I'm going to keep going with the same thoughts as he okay. probably thought he was going the right way. Like, he probably thought this little crack was a rumor or, like, a hallway, and he kept trying to walk. He was probably under the influence, whether it was drinking or drugs, or maybe both. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was so much that he just kind of didn't, because I don't think anyone in their right mind would force themselves to just keep wedging themselves, unless you're a small child. That's wholly different. Mm -hmm. But if you're, like, a grown-ass man and you are literally squeezing yourself through this wall and you keep going for how many, Mm -hmm. how long, I'm pretty sure you're probably under something and then you realize you can't go back and you just kept going until you got stuck. Mm -hmm. It's either that or you just kind of was like, eh. But you said he was wedged. Like, he was literally stuck. Yeah. If anything, it's like, if there was any breathing room, he would have stopped there, if the breathing room, technically, yeah. if he was stuck, and then you would be like, oh, help, 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 yeah. but no, he kept going until no more. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my thought. I don't even have a description of the position they found him in. What do you think happened? Um, well, let me give you a little bit more. Okay. So they also think that he may have fallen or passed out and positioned himself in a place where he couldn't breathe properly because his chest would have been restricted and they believe that he probably died in minutes and that they determined that the cause of death was positional asphyxiation. But they don't even explain what the position was like. (laughs) So how would we know? I feel like it's the most, the most likely scenario is probably the one that you posed that he was on drugs, paranoid, Or 
Maybe claustrophobia, too. Yeah. Maybe he was not only on drugs and stuff, he kept going, got claustrophobic, mm-hmm. started panicking, and ended up trying yeah. to change positions and panicked too much and kind of gave himself a heart attack, basically. The only reason I don't want to lean towards drugs is we don't know if he even did drugs. Yeah. There's no... It's so tough because we don't know anything about him. Nope. So... I just try to assume, like, no one in their right mind would do walk straight into that and keep going as much as he did. Yeah, the only thing that makes sense is either he was on drugs or kind of like in the episode, he was running from something. Yeah, hiding, trying to hide. But it's like... I don't think if that was the case, someone would have went after him, Mm -hmm. and then you would have found another body, because he went pretty far. That's true. So, and if he kept himself, I don't think he really caused trouble, either. Yeah. I think I think your scenario makes the most sense, to me, at least. I don't really like the idea of him. Yeah. What makes sense to me is that he got confused. Yeah. And thought he was going in the right direction. Kind of like when you think about people who are underwater. Yes. And it's super dark and you're trying to figure out which way is up. And then you realize you're going the wrong way. Yeah. And you're making the, a much longer course for yeah. you. Yeah. And I think that was yeah. him. I mean, you guys can let us know what you think. Yeah. What are your theories? Let us know um, in wherever Instagram you are. Instagram or... <laughs> wherever you are. Tweet us. Tweet. Comment. You know comment on let this us video. know what do you think happened comment on the audio yeah um also, i will have theories for days and days you you <laughs> will <laughs> so for the his sister abby sanchez read a statement to the press mm-hmm. about the discovery of her brother's body mm-hmm. and basically i mean they were hoping to find him alive yeah of course you know she told the press that eduardo was a wonderful person he was the best brother any sister could have and the best son any mother and father could have. This, this, she said, quote, this definitely was not what we anticipated, a family's worst nightmare. That's so sad. I know. She added that her and her parents, Eduardo Sr. and Erna, want to remember Eduardo for the person he was, his love of fashion, music, art, and not for what happened to him. Is she, is the sister older or younger? I don't know. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Like, this is the part that makes me sad is... There's really nothing. There's nothing. Like, in a lot of the different forums, it's just repeats of the other articles. So, it makes me sad because she doesn't... His family didn't want him to be remembered from what happened to him. They wanted him to be remembered for his life. But unfortunately, I can't freaking find anything about his life. (laughs) Anything about this man's life. So it's like, of course, we're only going to assume, you know, all this other stuff that we found out. But Mm -hmm. it's like, at least there's at least still that, the forums talking about him. Mm -hmm. Because it sounds like, it's almost like if you don't even talk about that, you're kind of getting rid of him completely. Well, all of the forums are from the early 2000s. Yeah, but it's like, if you don't have information about his life in general, and you only have the whatever happened to him, and even if you didn't have that, he's never going to be remembered for anything, Mm -hmm. if no one talks about him at all. I found an article that was kind of about the club. Really? And um, it went through a bunch of different names, and the history of the collective is actually kind of interesting in the scene that it provided people you know, in the early 2000s and the 90s. Mm-hmm. But they said that for years, the club suffered a decline in attendance because no one wanted to go to the club where the guy died. Dang, that sucks. Yep. There's also a song by this band called Pelican mm-hmm. called Dead Between the Walls that was inspired by the incident. I looked up the song. There are no lyrics. <laughs> it's only an instrumental. Yeah. So I don't understand. Because I was about to say, I'm like, hold on. What? I kind of want to listen to the song. I mean, it's just an instrumental, so I don't understand. But I'll, also... I'll listen to it and I'll see what I think about it. So this case is what inspired the episode. And you can see that really easily. Specifically, the fact of the camera going behind the wall mm-hmm. to see who's there. The idea of the person getting wedged and asphyxiating. Did they say... That this episode was literally based on that case? Yeah. 
That's actually inspired by. It's kind of nice that they did that. Because yeah. at least it's like, you know, no one really knows about this case. No one really talks about it. And this sounds like such an impossible thing, but it happened. It's so fascinating. I would love to know more about it. Yeah. But I can't. I mean, obviously, there are probably better sleuths out there than me who can do more than a Google search to find I more information. I just wish we knew more about, like, his life and what he did and what he wanted to be and well, where he was his direction a DJ. was going. He loved music. Yeah. He loved fashion. And he loved art. And he loved his family, and his family loved him. I just wish there was more, like, what was your aspiration? What were your dreams? What did you want to do? Where did you want to go? Mm-hmm. Did you meet anyone? Do you have friends? You know? Yeah, why are you so hot? (laughs) (laughs) Why is your picture blurry? (laughs) Why is that the only picture of you? Is (laughs) Is that actually you? Is it even you? Have I fallen for the classic blunder of believing the internet? Oh my gosh. It'd be like that sometimes. It do. It do. And I'm sad. But you know what? Mr. Sanchez will remember you. We will remember you. Rest in peace, good sir. Rip, Mr. Sanchez. Rip. Yeah, so that's yeah. Um, that's the end of this episode. Um, I'm excited for the next episode in particular. Mm. For the, I plan out, I try to plan out ahead of the crimes that I'm going to do for each case. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited for the next one. What is the next one again? Um, the next episode is is A Man on Death Row. Okay, okay, it's a great okay. episode because it introduces a character mm-hmm. that is important yep. to Bones lore. And I also have a really interesting case to go along with it. I'm excited. Yep. I hope you guys are too. Keep us turned on. Oh my god, why are you like this? <laughs> Don't turn us off. <laughs> Do not turn us off, please. Let's stay turned on together. Let's always stay turned on. Together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Round of applause, mm-hmm. clap and a half. Come back. Pass, go. We'll Collect co- $200 we'll, that we do not have. We'll cabadon you again. We'll, yes. With our glued skulls. Yes. <laughs> Catch you guys next week. <laughs> Goodbye. We love you very much. Goodbye. Adios. Das vidania. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Later, babes. Stop. <laughs> Bye. (laughs) Goodbye. Next week on The Heart and the Bones, let's go up to a stranger and ask them if we've got a sex vibe. I'm going to just poke them with a stick and run. Enjoy. You do, you do that. You do that. You can, you. (laughs) Yeah, because we both know it's highly likely. Oh, yeah. Highly likely. I'm a very outgoing person. Totally. 